Spend your summer binging Buckley's back catalog and enjoying new exclusives every week. It's way cheaper than a movie ticket. Support the habit at patreon.com slash dose of Buckley. In the late 1950s, the Whammo Toy Company sold over 100 million hula hoops in a two-year period. Kids were enthralled with a plastic circle that you put around your waist and wiggled your hips to see how long you could keep it from falling. That was the peak of entertainment in the 1950s. And now, can you believe it? No one does it anymore. It's almost like people's tastes change, new forms of entertainment are created, and old ones struggle to stay as relevant as they once did. And even though this cycle has been happening for hundreds of years, we're surprised when it happens again, and need to find someone to blame. And so, perhaps not dying quite the same dramatic death that plastic circles did, movie theaters, and really the film industry in general, are struggling to draw the audiences it once used to. 2024 has been a year of movies flopping harder than Boogie and Wings of Redemption in a diving competition. Fall Guy made $145 million off a $150 million budget. Ghostbusters Frozen Empire, listen to fans that didn't want no Lady Busters, brought back the three living originals, teamed them up with modern day Dorian Gray, Paul Rudd, and only sucked up $200 million. Ryan Reynolds made a family comedy called If, and if this is the first time you're hearing about it, I'm not surprised. It made $100 million on a $100 million budget. All movies starring big name Hollywood dudes, that'll be important in a second, all tanking at the box office, in an era where they say that movies need to make back at least twice their budget just to break even, where you're not a success if you ain't cracking 500 mil. And while this year's only half over, we haven't hit the summer season, and yes, we're still seeing the effects of a writers and actors strike that's left us with slimmer pickings than last call at a college bar in Arkansas, where your only choices are your sister and her ugly friend, and you've already had your sister, we're a far cry from, say, 2018, where 18 movies made half a bill, and five made over a billion. Or 2019, where nine movies made over a billion dollars. One of those made nearly three billion dollars. And the real kick in the dick for the movie industry came this Memorial Day, often considered the launch of the summer movie season, where the US box office had its worst weekend since 1995, headlined by Furiosa, a Mad Max saga, scrounging up 32 million dollars. When you factor in inflation, it was actually worse than 1995, when Casper bombed with 22 million, which is $45 million in 2024 Inflatabox. A 15-year-old Christina Ricci talking to a ghost put up better numbers than Anya Taylor-Joy in 100 explosions. And so, this has left everyone asking, why? Why aren't people going to the theaters? Which has been whittled down to three-ish possible choices. Movies are too expensive, slash the theater experience isn't worth it anymore. No one knows what movies are coming out. And of course, movies are too woke now. Let's take the last part first. Goobers like The Quartering have offered their two cents, which aren't even worth that. Boiling the failure of Furiosa to, People are sick of female protagonists. This of course ignores the fact that the biggest movie last year was Barbie which in 2023 he called uncut third-wave feminism pornography and said all the women were super powerful, unstoppable girl bosses. And when reminded of Barbie's success when bitching about Furiosa, he said that it wasn't selling a strong female lead, it was just selling a normal woman. So I guess either he thinks normal women are third-wave feminists and super powerful, unstoppable girl bosses, or he's a grifter who will just say anything for a reaction and more Elon bucks to justify his paid-for blue check. <laughs> How could we possibly know which is true? But anyway, it should be noted that Mad Max Fury Road only made $45 million in its opening weekend only cleared about 380 million worldwide at a time when people were going to the theaters. And it came out nine years ago. Is it possible that a prequel spin-off, regardless of the gender of the main character, who, spoiler alert, we know lives because they appeared in the fucking other one, was destined to not do great numbers? 
It was also an R-rated movie released during a weekend when families traditionally take their kids to the movies, just to get them the fuck out of the house during the long weekend. Last year's big Memorial Day movie was The Little Mermaid. Uh-oh, not just a pesky girl movie, but one where they made her black. Double woke! And it still made $120 million that weekend, nearly four times as much as Furiosa only a year ago. So, maybe this isn't the best movie to use as proof that the entire film industry is taking its last gasps. But if the film industry is struggling, it's because it cannibalized itself. Part of this was due to the pandemic. Remember when every industry conspired to lose money for some unknown reason? Except grocery stores, they did fine. But once studios started putting movies out for basically free, and then when theaters opened back up and said, all right, we'll let you show our movie for like two months, then it's going digital. Everyone went, two months? Well, why the fuck would I ever pay $12 a ticket again? Which brings me to reason number two. Movies are too dang expensive these days. Which of course, it's not the movie, it's the popcorn, the pop. Some people on socials mention that if they want to enjoy a movie without their annoying children, they gotta pay a sitter. By the time they're done, it's 50 or 60 bucks just to go see a movie. And it's not just $50, it's $50 in an economy where everything got more expensive. People like this chimed in with, Spending $50 for a date night is really cheap, actually. This post is kind of embarrassing. And in 2024, maybe $50 is a cheap night out. But the movies are a horrible value. $50 for two people to sit in the dark to watch a movie together, silently, for like two hours, with the most likely conversation about it afterward being, Oh, what'd you think? And the other person replying, Yeah, I liked it and hope that, out of the hundred other people in that movie theater, one of them isn't going to ruin your night by talking or fucking around with their phone or playing with their chair recliner button or spending two minutes opening a package of candy during a quiet part, which they feel entitled to do because they also paid to be there. That's not a bet I'd take, that's for sure. And sure, you don't need to get popcorn and pop, but guess what? You also don't need to go to the theater. In a world where 50-inch TVs are now quaint, I can choose from a thousand movies for like $15 a month, and TV shows like The Bear, Yellow Jackets, The Sympathizer, Shogun, Tokyo Vice, and Barry are better than anything the film industry has put out in years, why should I go out? They have to give me a reason to go. I don't need to give them a reason why I don't want to go. This isn't some sacred, charitable institution that must be saved at all costs. It's a multi-billion dollar industry that pays Ryan Gosling $20 million to be in a movie and somehow can't figure out why it's losing money or how to get people to show up anymore. Which brings me to complaint number three, the battle cry that rings out every time a movie does poorly. I didn't even know it was coming out. I'd love to know the people who say that. How many ad blockers are you running? But this is probably the biggest challenge for films. They haven't adapted. You know where they advertise? A, on network TV, which no one under 50 still watches, and B, at the movie theater, where they shove 15 minutes of ads and trailers before the movie. I counted it last time I went. 15 minutes. They're only advertising to people who already go to the theater, not to the people who don't. I can tell you what isn't going to increase business. It's Nicole Kidman getting all starry-eyed and sloppy snatched over clips of Avatar. Sorry, AMC. <laughs> nice try, though. They need to be advertising where young people are and figuring out a way to make it look organic, make it look like an event, because people hate being advertised to now more than ever. Barbie and Oppenheimer benefited from a dumb luck social media phenomenon that boosted both movies. Arguably Oppenheimer more so. A three-hour biopic about a guy who made the first nuke had no business making nearly a billion dollars. While Barbie was always going to get little girls, women nostalgic for their childhood, and Margot Robbie feet simps no matter what. Someone tried to make Gar Furiosa happen and failed miserably. And we know how well Morbin Time did. Sony got tricked into re-releasing a movie to empty theaters because they didn't understand what a meme was. 
And that's the biggest problem. It's a bunch of old people steering the ship who don't know that kids today watch eight hours of Kai Sinat throwing his controller and I show speed having a conniption fit over selling digital cards accidentally. Only a month ago, 150 million people watched Mr. Beast torture a couple babies and several elderly people in cubes. This is your competition, film industry, and you're losing to it? You go ahead and point those fingers wherever you want, but you only have yourself to blame for that.